Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Roman Jakubowski, who is the president of the Lakehead University Student Union. Welcome, Roman. Well, uh, it's good to be here. All right. Well, Roman, let's start a little bit with your early days. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up. Were you a Thunder Bay boy or where are you from? I'm originally from Burlington, Ontario, uh, which is in the GTA. And right. I came here six years ago uh, for outdoor recreation. And a couple of years ago, I switched into philosophy at uh, Lakehead. And then I ran to be the president of the student union. And I'm in my, I'm in kind of the middle of my second term. Well, um, you know, it's funny. It's, I mean, I think LU is well known for outdoor recreation. Yeah and, yeah, and and you know when at first you know when you just told me here you switch to philosophy, I went, oh, there's interesting. But of course, if you're out in nature a lot, <laughs> it's easy to kind of be thinking philosophically. How did that transition take place for you? Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense too. I mean, uh, I do spend a lot of time thinking. I I took uh, philosophy courses kind of from year one, so it was kind of a natural transition. Uh, and I thought Outdoor Rec was a great program, but uh, I just kind of wanted to go in a different direction, and I was kind of thinking about law school or something like that, so I thought, oh, well, maybe philosophy is a better, better fit, or grad school, right? Maybe philosophy is a better uh, fit, you know, for what I kind of want to do, and then I started doing this, and I got kind of into the politics side of things, and, you know, that's been a really interesting experience, and probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life, <laughs> really, if, if we're being honest, you know. Well, and I think politics <laughs> is always a, a real challenge because you have all these diverse interests who, yeah. who oh, want yeah. their, their airtime and, and you to, to somehow represent their interests, but, but you can't do everything. Yeah, How do you balance that? What do you... Yeah, it's tough. You got to prioritize. You got to you know, find the greatest good for the greatest number of people, if you can, right? I mean, um, but there's always going to be people who are dissatisfied, and, you know, that's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. And has philosophy, the, what you've been learning in school and, and, you know, thinking about, has that influenced how you see your role as a, as a, a politician, in a way, a, a student politician? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I'm a big believer in praxis and I'm a voracious consumer of materials. I, I read, you know, like an uh, incredible amount and uh, I'm constantly reworking, you know, what I'm doing and, and trying to rethink what I'm doing and, you know, bringing all sorts of uh, literature, different kinds of thought into, you know, what it is that I'm doing, right? Um, and even, you know, right now I'm in a course, Native Canadian Worldviews at the university with Dennis McPherson, and he's, he does Native philosophy. And, you know, it's, to it's totally amazing to, to come at something from just a totally different perspective, right? Because mm -hmm. it just makes you rethink what you're doing. And, you know, I'm kind of one of those people who's always trying to get better at what they're doing, so. Well, which is definitely an admirable quality. So let's step back a little bit uh, and, and talk, you know, share a little bit with our viewers about Lakehead University. I mean, it's a, it's a big part of our city, but how big? What, what are we looking at in terms of numbers and impact here in the city? Uh, so at Lakehead University, uh, I think there's in the range of seven to 9,000 students in total. Some of those are in Aurelia. I think there's about 15 to 2,000, 1,500 to 2,000 students in Aurelia. Um, it's a pretty big economic impact, like billions of dollars over many years. I think it's been some, Somebody said to me six billion dollars or something once. I mean, that's not maybe the best figure. I think they, the university themselves, don't have a good sense of the economic impact because it's so difficult to measure, right? You have yeah. people coming in, and you know, there's not just the salaries of professors and stuff, but there's also 
um, you know, all the spending that students do while they're here and stuff like that. So, you know, but I think the social impact is pretty huge too. I mean, Thunder Bay is kind of blessed to have uh, Lakehead and uh, Confederation College. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Burlington, we're surrounded, there's no, nothing in Burlington. We're kind of surrounded in the GTA by, you know, different institutions, but, you know, it's amazing that in uh, Thunder Bay, there's two post-secondary education uh, op opportunities. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. And, you know, I mean, as now an older guy, I really look to younger folks, you know, the mm -hmm. students who are in university and college to kind of set a new course for us. And, and we've got a lot of, you talked about some of the social aspects. We've got a lot of issues socially that we've got to address. Yeah. Does that play out at the university and, and, and in your role as president, do you think? Uh, you know, I, I think it's hard to say, actually, you know. You know, to some extent, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a critic, and I think that, you know, one of the things that we're constantly talking about is access to education, and, you know, the reality is that, you know, even at Lakehead, which has the, I think, the lowest tuition fees in the province or something like that, I mean, you still have huge problems with access to education. You know, it's not really... Uh, as accessible as it could be. So, you know, it, it kind of is designed to keep people out when you look at high tuition fees, right? Mm -hmm. And things like that. And, you know, and then tuition fees, I mean, that's just part of it. And then you have, you know, a thousand dollars in textbooks. I know, and, my uh, granddaughter, $300 <laughs> for a book. I'm kind of, what do you, you can buy the whole library. Yeah. Like, what's with this? Yeah, well, I mean, one of my, uh, projects and, and one of my priorities this year has been to work on open access, uh, which is a movement in academia to basically make educational resources more accessible. Uh, so yeah, I, I just started a book by uh, John Walensky called The Access Principle. And uh, in that he's talking about, you know, when you look at the role of publishers in creating scientific literature, um, you know, what do publishers really add to the process? Because this, they're not scientists, you know, scientists do the science, they review the journals, and then the publishers just do kind of, you know, the bureaucratic end of things. But, you know, a journal isn't necessarily going to be better just because it was published by a publisher and then charged you money for it, right? And in a lot of cases, I mean, you have libraries that can't afford, uh, like he's talking about in the book, you've got libraries that can't afford the journals the professors are publishing in. So, I mean, that's something that we're working on. Right on. Which I think is pretty important. Uh, we need to take a short break. We'll be right back. Uh, please stay with us. Great. <laughs> 